PowerPoint presentation. Tender Weeds of Desire, <laughs> Colonel Sanders' novella, will not be seen today. In this place, we bring the following program that contains a recipe for murder. The Haunt of Fear. Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> I see by your Julian faces that you're hungry for another terror tale from my collection here in the Crypt. Well, this one ought to satisfy your appetite. <laughs> yes, it's me, the Crypt Keeper. You're hosting Tales from the Crypt. Come in. I'm about to tell you a yarn guaranteed to make your hair stand on end and your blood freeze in your, ah, uh, you know, the old oil. Oil. That reminds me of a deep fat frying which what our story concerns itself with. That's in barbecuing. <laughs> I call this delicious delirium delving. What's cooking? The shabbily dressed man plods up to the roadside eating place, pushes open the rickety screen door, lets it slam resoundingly behind him, and looks around. His gaze shifts from the empty tables and chairs to the sawdust covered floor, to the counters with its line of empty stools, to the glaring faces of the food stands to proprietors. Not very busy, are you? Go on, scram! No handouts! The one with the tattered clothes shakes his head and smiles at the two behind the counter. You're wrong, gentlemen. I am not the one who is looking for a handout. You are. This place is a failure, isn't it? None of your business. Look, you want something to eat or don't you? Not right now. First, let me finish. In the three weeks since you foolishly purchased this, this so-called roadside restaurant from its last owner, you've had a total of 62 customers. Hardly enough to keep you in business. In fact, I would say two more months of that kind of business, an average of three meals sold a day will bust you. You mean, you've been out there counting our customers for three weeks? Exactly. I also counted the number of cars that passed on the highway outside in the same period. Know how many? 22,000. Over 900 a day. About two cars each minute. Whoa, that many? Yes. If you could stop, say, one out of ten of those cars, you'd serve a hundred meals a day or more. Think what that would mean. A hundred more? That would be something. Yeah, smart guy. How are you gonna stop them? That gentleman is my secret, and my offer is very simple. I'll work for nothing until this place shows a profit. For nothing? Well, for my meals. I'll sleep in the back, but after I shape the place, install my own methods and ideas, and the business begins to show a profit instead of a loss, then I get 50%, half the profits. Those are my terms. The huge fat one looks at the small skinny one. They've sunk their live savings into this place. Their situation is desperate. They've lost steadily. Their bank account is almost gone. Any offer, any way to show a profit sounds good to them. What do you say, Herman? Have a profit is better than no profit at all, Charlie. Uh, let's give them a chance. Then it's a deal? Okay, stranger, uh, it's a deal. You make this place pay and you can have half of the profits. Good, then we might as well get well acquainted. My name is Eric Edwards. Thick lip grin spreads over the fat one's jolly face. I'm Herman Dater. Uh, this is Charlie Marson. Glad to know you, Herman. Charlie. Now, here's my plan. This place is like every other roadside eatery on the highway. We've got to specialize. You've heard the expression, jack of all trades, master of none. Well, we're going to specialize in one dish. Listen, hear that? From far off, a rooster crows, its raspy cry echoing through the balmy California air. All I hear is the chickens on that farm up the road. And they're probably very cheap. We're going to specialize in chicken, nothing but chicken. The next day and the days that follow are filled with sounds of sawing and hammering as Eric begins to change the appearance of the little restaurant. What's he doing up there, Herman? Looks like Eric's making the roof over, Charlie. Slowly, the silhouette of a huge chicken takes shape. Large, brilliantly colored letters are painted on it. The chicken coop. Hey, that's pretty snazzy, Eric. This ought to attract attention, eh, boys? Then, the clinking and cheeking of bricks resound over the busy highway. He must be nuts. 
He's putting up a chimney right in front of the place. What in the hell is that, Eric? It's going to be a barbecue, Charlie. We're going to cook the chickens right out in front so everyone can see from the road. Soon, a tiny curl of smoke rises from the barbecue. The succulent, mouth-watering odor of broiling chickens wafts towards the busy highway. Mmm, that smells good. Look, barbecue chicken. Let's stop and eat here, Sam. Okay, Flo. How about it, kids? Hungry? Yay! Yippee! So highway travelers begin to stop at the chicken coop. They crowd the tables that have been moved outside, watching their orders turn on the spit before the red-hot coals. This sure is nice, eh, Bella? Some idea. Yum, I'm starved. Delicious. The chicken coop begins to thrive as more and more customers jam the novel establishment. You certainly have done wonders, Eric. We'll have to buy some more tables to accommodate the flood of customers. An adjacent tract of land bordering the highway is leased and clear. This will make room for more cars and the deep fat fryer. The, the deep fat fryer? Whoa, 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 what's that for? Southern style fried chicken. It will be a good addition to the barbecued fowl. You sure are a shrewd business man, Eric. A large shiny copper cauldron is brought in and southern style deep fat fried chicken is added to the menu. This is better than the maker is way back home in Georgia's hall. Well, thank you, ma'am. The fame of the chicken coop begins to spread. My husband and I drove 30 miles to try your barbecue chicken. Really? That is mostly gratifying, ma'am. The success of the chicken coop with its outdoor barbecue and deep fat fryer is unbelievable. In one year, the tiny food stand grows to a huge roadside emporium with 100 car parking lot and seats for 250 people. Charlie, Herman, I think it's time to build a new chicken coop. I have visions of something big, something stupendous. We'll build a giant bar- What? Construction of the new chicken coop is begun. A beautiful modernistic restaurant rises beside its predecessor. The barbecue is tremendous. Each one of these four spits is 12 feet long. We'll catch the fat drippings from the broiling chickens in that catch pan up there and use the stuff in the deep fat fryer. See? There's an economical idea, eh, Herman? The deep fat fryer is a huge cauldron over six feet in diameter and two feet deep. We could deep fat fry 50 chickens at one time in this thing. We certainly come a long way, eh, Charlie? When the new chicken coop is open to the public, it is an immediate success. Even with its huge capacity, people have to wait in line for tables. Boy, look at that barbecue. And look at the cauldron. Mmm, -mm, smells good. Fortune smiles upon the three restaurateurs. The profits pour in, and with mounting profits comes mounting greed. Look at these books, Herman. We netted $2,000 last week. Well, that means 500 a piece for you and me and 1,000 for Eric. Quite a large chunk for him, eh, Herman? If he wasn't around, we could split it 50-50. Not 500, but one grand for each of us. Oh, but what can we do? We've had an agreement we've made back when we were nothing. If, if Eric were to die, we could forget the agreement. Oh, he's healthy as a... Don't be as thick as you look, you fat idiot. I'm not talking about a natural death. <laughs> you mean you mean murder? Yes, he's got no family. He came to us penniless and alone, so he put us on top. So what? He's got a lion's share. I say let's take it all for ourselves. Whoa, 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 what's your plan, Charlie? Simple. Eric bought himself that little ranch house up on the main highway. Now, suppose while he... It caught fire and he burned to death. That night, Eric is awake by a sound in his room. He sits up staring into the darkness. Who, 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 who's there? It's me, Eric. Herman, don't be frightened. Despite his lumbering hulk, Herman is upon Eric in a flash. Charlie moves out of the shadows with a coil of rope. Stick the gag in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> the fat one and the skin one work swiftly. Soon, Eric is securely tied to the bed and the room is in flames. So long, Eric. <laughs> Thanks for all the help. From now on, we work alone. Just me and Herman. 50-50. As the two men watch from a vantage point far down Eric's private road, hot searing tongues of fire leap upward out of the windows. Soon, Eric's nice new home is a roaring inferno. 
Come on, Herman. Let's go back to the chicken coop and make plans. Boy, that's some fire. But as the fat one and the thin one disappear into the night, a blackened and charred figure crawls painfully from the flaming house, howling like a dog that has just been struck by a car. The odor of burned flesh fills the night as the scorched figure drags itself along the, its blood curdling screams of agony, echoing into the darkness. In their office in the new chicken coop, Herman and Charles drink a toast to their future. But suddenly, their grins freeze on their faces as the door is flung open. <gasps> Eric, it can't be! In the morning, the police, investigating the burning of Eric's nice new house, stopped by the new chicken coop to inquire. Look at this, on the floor, it's the blackened and burned corpse of a man. Mm, that's Eric Edwards' body. He must have been caught in the fire in his house. But how in the world did he manage to drag himself all the way here in that condition? Then, one policeman's gaze falls upon the giant barbecue. Good lord! I feel sick! Herman Ditter's sizzling body hangs from the topmost spit before the now glowing embers. The fat rendered from his once obese body bubbles and gurgles in the immense cauldron. Bobby, in the boiling grease is the brown seared remains of Charlie Morrison. This, this guy's been real broiled! And this one, huh, it's been solid fried! <laughs> And now, my tale is done, kiddies. Well done. <laughs> I hope that's left you with a ravishing appetite. What? Not hungry? Oh, that's a shame. I thought you might like to join me at the chicken coop. Well, where is it? Why, next time you go out driving, look for it. They have the most delicious broiled food. Or do you like your sudden fried? Mm -hmm. Well, that winds up the old hag's mag. We'll all see you next in mine, Tales from the Crypt. Bye now. Oh, I almost forgot. If you'd like to listen to more EC Read Aloud, some comics come alive, the 9 to 5 Outlaw Reviews YouTube channel is your place. Ta-ta for now.